Have you ever watched an NFL game, especially the Detroit Lions, and said, man, the NFL really seems to go against that team? I think we've got some possibility to talk about today, the fact that perhaps the NFL wanted to see the Seattle Seahawks in against the 49ers versus the Detroit Lions potentially being in there. I'm going to dive into some of that, some of the things that have hit the media circuits and things of that sort regarding this topic, and then try to fire at you a few other nuggets of information that make you have to at least raise an eyebrow and say, does the NFL have it in for the Detroit Lions? Let's get into all that and maybe just a little bit more in today's Deep Dive Lions Talk Live. Well, greetings and salutations to everybody out there in YouTube land. I'm your host, once again, Dan Thornton. I want to thank each and every one of you this Sunday for tuning in to Lions Talk Live. You know, as somebody who's who's been a reporter for, you know, better part of the last three decades, a coach for three to four decades, general manager of a pro, uh, professional team, here's what I'm going to throw at you. No official, no coach, no general manager, no administrator wants anybody to believe or have the opinion that a professional sports franchise is being disenfranchised by officiating. Questionable officiating does happen at every level from time to time. After all, the officials are human. So what I'm about to say comes with a grain of salt, but also something I don't personally want to believe in, even though some of the factors we're about to discuss may look like you, we all have to talk about it. So with that being said, we're going to start this table by saying last night's 49ers versus Seattle Seahawks game. You know, great first half for both teams. Obviously, the 49ers just pulled away with it the longer the game went on. But I'm sure if you're a Lions fan, you watched that game and said, man, the Lions would have been a whole lot better matchup for, against the 49ers than what Seattle was able to put out there. With that being said, let's go back a week ago, virtually from today, and say what happened at the end of that Rams versus Seahawks game. If you're a Detroit Lions fan, questionable officiating at ends of games, especially impactful games for the Detroit Lions, is nothing new. You can go back to how Aaron Rodgers' miracle in Motown throw that was set up by a hand that barely touched a face mask on Rodgers, but then grabbed the shoulder pad and pulled him around. Officials incorrectly, admitted uh, by the NFL itself, called a uh, face mask penalty against the Lions, giving Rodgers and the pack an extra down, untimed, to be able to throw the Hail Mary. We can go into whether or not you know Megatron or other players should have been on the field to bat that ball down. That's irrelevant at this point. But the bottom line is I go through a laundry list of you know the, the catch that wasn't a catch in the end zone, stuff like that for Lions fans. But now... In a game not even directly related to the Lions, indirectly related, the Lions were on the bad side of some officiating calls. If you watched, like most of the nation, that Seahawks versus Rams game, you can say this, in overtime and in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, officials stepped in to make four or possibly five very questionable calls, and all of them, yes, all four or five, favored one team. That's something that's a little bit of an eyebrow raise if you're a coach, player, or general manager, or anybody involved in sports. So the questionable calls, you know, obviously drew national attention. And I'm going to go on to ESPN's Adam Scheffler, who reports from around the NFL and gives this quote, Lions should be livid about several pro Seahawks calls at the end of the Seahawks game they won in overtime, 19-16 to keep Dan Campbell and co. out of the playoffs. Sheffer goes on to quote an anonymous source from his you know, experience. He's been covering the NFL for an incredibly long time. Here it is. The quote, multiple executives and coaches said the NFL needs to reevaluate how it chooses and trains its officiating staff for future seasons, end quote. Sheffer wrote in his report late Friday. Now, resume quote, even the NFL's competition community is aware that excuse me, is aware of one of what one source described to ESPN as, quote, the worst officiated game of the year. Obviously, that's not anything uh, Lions fans want to hear, but it is what it is. So let's continue on with this story and the quotes from Scheffler and his sources. Resuming the quotes, uh, the committee talked about this at length 
in regards to what happened at the end of the L, excuse me, the LA Rams versus Seattle Seahawks game. Shepard keeps on with his report saying, quote, one source told ESPN this week that the NFL must do a better job of screening, hiring, and training officials, end quote. He resumed, quote, the league can't have games in which team seasons are on the line and have questionable and impactful calls such as the ones at the end of the Rams-Seahawks game in week 18, end quote. So I, again, you know, what are the calls? What are the what are they all talking about? Let's dive into that. Well, to start off, we have a running the kicker penalty on LA with 8:47 left in the fourth quarter, which should have not been called. the The flag player ran. Uh, the flagged player Rams was pushed into Seahawks punter Mike uh, Michael Dickerson Dixon. Excuse me. Meanwhile, the flag should have been picked up. The Seahawks were trailing by three points at the time. Instead of punting to the Rams from their own 21, they maintained possession and later tied the, it at 16 with just over two minutes left. While that was one instance of what happened, let's go on to another instance. Later in that quarter, tied at 16, Rams cornerback Jalen Ramsey was called for unnecessary roughness infraction on Seattle quarterback Geno Smith that would make Dick Lane shudder in disbelief. No one, uh, excuse me, uh, not only did officials possibly err in throwing the flag in the first place, it appeared Ramsey was pushed out of bounds at the same time Smith ran out of bounds, causing the two to collide. But Seahawks wide out DK Metcalf was seen sticking his finger in Ramsey's face mask after play, which should have prompted a penalty. The quote, unnecessary roughness, end quote, pushed Seattle into French field goal territory with less than a minute left. But kicker Jason Meyer uh, eventually missed a 46-yard field goal attempt. In overtime, going on to the next play in question. In overtime, Smith likely should have been flagged for intentional grounding. His pass under duress with 9.26 left fell 10 yards short of any other Seahawks player. Now, let's go on to the final gaffe. So the final uh, play in question here in regards to this Rams-Seahawks game, the final gaffe included a former Lions draft pick. Seattle defensive back Quandre Diggs taunted opponents after picking off Rams quarterback Baker Mayfield with about eight and a half minutes left. Replays show Diggs pointing at the Rams' Bobby Wagner, a former teammate in Seattle. Had it been flagged, Seattle's drive would have started from its own 21 instead of 36. That possession ended with Myers kicking the game-winning 32-yard field goal. So with that being said, that's a lot of stuff coming in favor of one team while blatantly disregarding the impact it would have on the other team. So if those missed, you know, whatever you want to call them, penalties or pay, uh, penalties favoring one team over the other weren't bad enough, let's dive in how the NFL said, you know what, Detroit, yes, Rams, we... We screwed you both over. Now let's dive into how they doubled down on that. Detroit Lions running back Jamal Williams received a harsher penalty for dancing than Green Bay Packer Quandre, uh, Quay Walker did for shoving a trainer. That's right. His dancing was a higher regard penalty by the NFL than pushing medical staff. Let's dive into this. So Jamal Williams was fined 18000 $566 for his hip swiveling celebration on both of his touchdowns in the Packers game. Williams wasn't even penalized on the play. Now, what are you saying? You're saying that what happened here? Well, you know, this is what I'll say. Walker received only a roughly 12000 excuse me, $13,261 penalty for shoving medical personnel coming out on the field dealing with an injured DeAndre Swift. So when you look at just those factors, and obviously if you're a longtime Lions fan, you're aware of other ones, but it does seem for whatever reason, the NFL and its officiating committee plus higher brass have it in for the Detroit Lions. Should the officials have the ability to review late in the game situations where it's quite, quite obvious they missed some calls and inadvertently called fav favorable calls for one team, not just once, not just twice, not just three times, potentially four or five times in that end of the game situations for the Rams versus Raiders. 
If you've got the challenge flags, I believe the NFL needs to open it up where plays like running into the punter when you're shoved in the punter and the punter has both feet down the ground is catching that shoved player. That's not running into the kicker. That's not roughing the kicker. That's being shoved into the kicker. You can go on with all the other plays. I do have a problem with the taunting penalty not being called just because I'm going to say this. If you're a Lions fan, you remember the game, the playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, roughly 2014, Detroit Lions have the lead and driving down the field when a pass intended for Brendan Pendergrew is uh, deemed pass interference because the uh, Cowboys linebacker didn't even look for the ball, just runs over the player. Now, while you could debate, you know, hey, it hit the linebacker in the back, so maybe it's not pass interference. What is not debatable is that multiple Cowboy players, including Des Bryant, run on the field. Des Bryant does not have a helmet on. He's on the field and in an official's face yelling and screaming. Where's the penalty on that? I'm guessing the officials couldn't see, A, his helmet's not on, B, C, he's on the field, and three, apparently couldn't see that he's in his face yelling, spitting, and screaming. The spit isn't intentional, it's just as he's talking. But the point of the matter is, in high situation uh, games like this, it does seem like if you're a Detroit Lion player, coach, or fan, you're always not getting the benefit of the doubt. All right, well, I'm not going to go on any longer with this video, but I did want to bring it to your attention. Obviously, ESPN and other media outlets are still looking into this. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what the NFL chooses to do with this. They have not yet officially put out a response in regards to the officiating at that end of the game, but you do have Dean Blandino and other former officials who work for either Fox, you know, CVS, or, or whoever they work for have come out and said, yeah, all four of these plays are obviously bad situations for the league. They should have been uh, called differently than what happened. But again, my problem is I get once, twice issues happen. But when you start having three or four or five plays all favoring one team in such a short amount of time, it does, in my opinion, show intent towards biasness, intent towards favoring one team intentionally versus the other. It's just very difficult for human behavior to screw up so much in such a short amount of time and just mathematically have it all, by chance, favor one team. Let me know what your thoughts are on this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on these comments. If you haven't yet subscribed to Lions Talk Live, please consider doing so. It takes about a second, second and a half to hit the subscription button, thumbs up, and maybe even comment in the section below. I'm a little fired up over this topic, so I'm going to cut it off here. Hope you all have a great Sunday, and we'll see you tomorrow on Lions Talk Live.